It is a tradition that spans a half century. In fact, this is the 50th anniversary of the Waterfowl Festival in Easton. Unfortunately, that milestone celebration is being put on hold, but that doesn't mean we're not taking the time to celebrate Eastern Shore heritage, culture, and bird life. And here to tell us more is Margaret Enlow, who is the executive director of the Waterfowl Chesapeake. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. You bet. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for letting us get a chance to talk to folks. Yeah, so 50 years. Congratulations. Um, I imagine you guys had some pretty big plans for, for this year. We, we did, and, and I might say that we still have big plans for this year. They're just a little bit different. Um, we really wanted to celebrate our 50th year in style, and uh, there's so many logistical unknowns right now for us that we thought the best way to do that would be to postpone the 50th festival. So this is our 50th year, but we're going to have the 50th festival next year. Um, and this year we're hoping to do some other programs that highlight our mission this fall and maybe some smaller community activities that don't take eight months to plan. Sure, sure. So do you have, can you give us some examples of some of those activities? Well, I don't want anyone to yet hold me to it because everybody else we're figuring all this out, but we're thinking about virtual ways that we can still support all of our fine artists who come from all over the world. Um, many of whom really were worried about traveling this fall. So we still want to find ways to help support them and connect them with um, the people that love them and the buyers. Uh, we're thinking about some other ways to also do the same for our vendors and our exhibitors so that everybody knows who they are and can connect to them. And then we're also really thinking about maybe some small community celebrations, picnics, something like that, that we can do to celebrate our fall heritage but also not attracting 15,000 people, which is what the festival usually attracts. So we're not doing nothing, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, the festival is really run by community volunteers. Um, it's not run by the staff. And our volunteers are our lifeblood. A lot of them are really kind of worried about what the fall is gonna look like, but they are gonna be helping us. And I think this is gonna be the word that I just never wanna use again after 2020. The volunteers are gonna be helping us pivot to figure out what we can do this fall. So for the typical attendee to the Waterfowl Festival, what's it gonna look like to us? I mean, you mentioned that the possibly having picnics and small events. Could someone as far away as California be able to log on and attend? We don't know that yet. Uh, we're trying to figure out, you know, which events, we, which things we can do virtually and have that kind of support, which events maybe are better if we just stay focused on community. So for example, you know, if we wanted to do and I'm not saying we're doing this. If we wanted to do um, something that celebrates oysters because they return in the fall, you know, someone might be able to log into that, but it might just be a community picnic. Whatever we do this year, we want to be able to add into next fall. So we're not just creating sort of one-off programs. Maybe we'll do a few of those, but it makes me really excited for the 50th festival next year because we actually have the creative time and the space to think about some new things. So I guess if you could find a silver lining, that would be it, that the 50th celebration may end up being bigger, better than it would have been had we not had to go through the quarantine. I, I think that's probably true because the festival, as much as we all love it, is um, hugely complex to put on. It's all hands on deck kind of starting in July. And that means there's less time to really do any really big thinking about what do we want the next 50 years to look like? This is another huge loss and we recognize that for people. I've had time to process that because I've been thinking about this and you know, our board did not decide officially till this week. Uh, it could have gone a different direction, but it was pretty much unanimous. Um, so I know I've had time to process and. So now I can start being excited, but I really recognize uh, how the businesses in our community are feeling and how the visitors are feeling about this. And I do want to honor that. Well, whatever happens, good luck with it. I'm sure it's going to be great. Margaret Enlow, uh, Waterfowl Chesapeake Executive Director, thank you so much for joining us Whoop, this afternoon. Thanks for having me.